As Deputy Chief Architect for the Greenland Group, you've worked on tall buildings, projects all over China, all over the world. How is, why do you think China has emerged as the leader of tall building development? Mm -hmm. Is that just a function of economics or is something else mm -hmm. going on? Is there more to the story? Uh, first of all, I think the first reason for such an uh, increase, uh, uh, rapid development of the high building is due to the speedy economic development. The economy has to be developed, so we need the high buildings to accommodate more people. Mm. Uh, my second reason is that you know that the urbanization ratio in China is around 50%. So in our mechanism, if it will jump from 30% to 70%, this kind of urbanization ratio, it will generate more requirement over the super high buildings. For some European countries, we know that the urbanization ratio for those countries has already reached more than 70%. So they are less willing to renew the city. So you know that China, as we have very rapid economic development, along with the rapid urbaniz urbanization. That's why we now have higher requirement over the super high buildings. Hmm. I think the third reason is because the Chinese population accounted for 20% of the world population, and we do have a lot of mega cities. So due to the mega city reason, we now have more requirement over the super high buildings. Mm -hmm. How do you think tall building development and design is different in China? maybe different specifically in these mega cities that you just mentioned mm -hmm. than it is in other parts of the world. Uh, Technically speaking, I think there's no difference in terms of the design. But you know that uh, as we have different targeted audience, so that's why the functionality as well as uh, the portfolio of the truth will be totally different mm -hmm. between the Chinese market and the overseas market. Mm -hmm. Greenland's biggest developments right now are in second tier and third tier Chinese cities you know, not Beijing, Shanghai so much anymore, but some uh, smaller cities. Uh, how is development and design of tall buildings different in second and third tier cities than it is in first tier Chinese cities? I think the first difference is for about the customer base, because in the second tier cities, generally the customer is from the local region. Unlike the big cities, for example, like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, the customer not only include the local residents, but also the overseas buyers. Hmm. For the second tier cities, most of the customer or the clients are actually from the individual provinces or some of the surrounding cities. Hmm. At the same time, if we take from the cost perspective, you know for the first tier cities, due to the rental cost or the kind of sales price of the skyscrapers will be much higher for the second tier cities. So the cost for the construction will both enjoy a very high ratio in terms of the revenue. Hmm. Of course, you know that if we are going to do the super high buildings in the second tier city, they will also enjoy some advantages. For example, the local government will attach its great importance to the building, and it will truly become a landmark building in the local region. Hmm. Of course, for our company, we also have the super high building project in Beijing and Shanghai. But uh, probably we are not the highest one. The general height of our building in the first tier city is around 300 meters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how will you expect uh, investment flows to change in and out of China in the next five years or 10 years? In the last several years, we've seen more money flowing out of China as investment into projects overseas than might maybe are flowing into China. So how is that? net uh, investment uh, supposed to change over the next five years? In terms of the investment flow, I think for real estate companies like a Greenland company, most of the company will still do their investment in China, and the overseas investment will only accounted for a very small portion in our total investment, mm. especially like the companies in China. I think probably in the near future, they will enjoy more opportunities to go abroad for further investment. But until now, I think in the next five to 10 years, the China market will be more available than any overseas market.